I love this game so freaking much that ever since it released, I've spent every second, every minute, every hour playing this game in my free time. I love it so much that I can't sleep. I'm all kinds of screwed up. I'm up until 9 a.m. in the morning and then waking up around dinner time, eating and playing more. I love it so much that two days into playing it, I knew I'd screwed up by not buying the collector's edition. So I went out to Twitter, found someone that had a double, and I bought the game again, in a more expensive way. I don't think you guys are understanding the gravity of the situation here. Let me take a different path to how I usually do my videos, just for a second. Let me cut the music. Let me stop yelling for once. Let's bring it all the way down, just for a moment. This is like before the bass drops. This is like before the review begins. I love this game so much. It might be my favorite Switch game. I don't even know where to begin. This feels like a Goliath task for me to actually do this game any kind of justice whatsoever. Every single aspect of this game is near perfect. From the story, to the writing, to the characters, to the visuals, to the music, to the gameplay, to the combat, I am in love with all of it and I don't even know where to begin. But I guess just for the sake of picking something, I'm gonna start with the story and the characters. So the fantastic premise of this game is right in its title, Octopath. Octo as in eight, eight playable characters throughout the game, and path as in all the different paths and journeys and experiences that both these characters and you have as you play the game. Also giving that title even deeper meaning is every letter from the title corresponds to a name from one of the characters. I'm gonna try pronouncing and probably butchering all of these characters' names. Ophelia, Cyrus, Tressa, Alberic, Primrose, Alfin, Therion, and my personal favorite, Harnet. But Therion is a very close second. And all eight of these characters are playable in the game. When you start, you get to pick one and you experience their journey first. So no matter what other characters you find and want in your party after that, you have to have whoever you picked first in your party. And that really centers the experience and makes it feel like you've gone on a journey from start to finish, no matter who you pick. And whoever you pick at the start of the game, it will change your journey. You'll start in their town, and as you go around finding the other characters, you might do it in a completely different order to someone else who picked a different character. And as I said, all of these characters have very different background stories, and their personalities are all very different. The writing in this game might be the reason I'm so in love with it. Let me put it this way, I do really enjoy RPGs, but for the most part, I enjoy the experience, the adventure, and the combat and usually I find myself skipping through dialogue. But Octopath, I haven't skipped a damn thing. I look for more story, I look for more dialogue, I look for more things to read. From the characters and their conversations with each other, to their backgrounds, even just to the NPC characters and some of the side quests. There was this moment with this NPC character who had this guy that kept asking her to marry him, and when she said no, he would run home crying, and she thought that he was kind of a wimp, and she sort of asked for your help in this situation. But the ability that Alberic has is he can challenge someone to a fight, so in my rationale, I was like, well, I'll challenge him to a fight. I'll kick his butt and I'll make him cry and leave her alone forever. The guy ended up being super strong and kicked my butt in a couple of turns. So in the moment I was thinking, oh, damn it, I lost. There's no way I can beat this guy. I'm gonna have to go grind if I want to beat him. This is really hard. But then after the battle ended and it went back to the game, we saw that she was standing there and she had seen the fight and he told her that seeing her there during the fight gave him the strength he needed to take me down and then her realizing how strong a person he actually was and how much she actually meant to him they ended up falling in love through my defeat Matilda I would do anything for you I would even lay down my life for your happiness and so I ask you once more will you give me your hand in marriage I love the writing in this game this game makes me want to cry so stupid at least turn off the sweet music while this happens I never realized your love was so strong and true <laughs>
<laughs> I guess it's a good thing I died, right? There are so many other things I've experienced while playing that I've thought to myself, I have to remember this for my video, I have to remember this for my review, but honestly, there's too many. There's too many to even try. The music is fantastic. It has easily become one of my top five favorite soundtracks from a video game. Every single song in this game evokes so much emotion, from the title theme that just gets you ready to play the game, to the battle music that gets you so amped up you just want to destroy everything, and again, to the soft and sweet music that during the really dark moments or the really sad moments or even the sweet moments, you'll be fighting back tears in your eyes. The easiest way I can explain how fantastic the music is, is to show you what this incredible music can do. I was recently live streaming the new Adventure Time game, and I have a review of this game coming, and I realized that one of the things it was truly lacking is in the turn-based battles, there was no background music. It just felt really empty. It felt like there was something missing. So the music is just like, where's the battle music right now? It's really missing like ambience. But as soon as I loaded up the battle music from Octopath Traveler on YouTube and I played it behind the game, suddenly I was way more amped up to play Adventure Time. So much better. Like, I like the game so much more now. Octopath has such great music, man. Like, how much is this music heightening this experience? And that right there, what it did to that game for a brief moment, imagine that for an entire gaming experience, and that's the music in Octopath. I love it. Speaking of the cast of characters, I just keep bouncing around everywhere. Each one of these characters have their own reason for setting out on this adventure and needing the help of the other characters. Again, I don't want to ruin too many of these characters or these experiences, but I'll take my favorite character, for example, Hana. Her story revolves around her friend going out to find this mystical magic beast and then never returning. So you then have to set off and find out what happened to your friend. So of course, her character is a hunter. She's a huntress. And that's reflected not only in her story and her character and the way she presents herself but also in the way she plays during combat. Her two main weapons are a bow and an axe, very huntery. A lot of her hunter abilities involve using her arrow, like there's a huge arrow storm that she can just rain down arrows on everyone. It's by far my favorite move in the game. But then she also has command over beasts. She has a leopard, I think it's a leopard. I probably should have looked that up. She has a leopard that comes with her everywhere and she can summon it at any moment and that has unlimited use and he's really cool. I like him a lot. But then almost every beast that you find that you come across, she can tame them, capture them, and then summon them during battles. And depending on what kind of creatures she captures will depend on what it does. Maybe it does a huge slash to every enemy on the screen, or maybe it heals your entire team. But that leads to her character being extremely flexible and versatile. Because all enemies will have several different weaknesses, but with Hana, because you can capture all these different beasts, and they will have different attacks, Theoretically, at any given time, you could have any creature's weakness on deck. But that's just one character out of eight. They all play so differently and have such varied abilities, which again aligns with their traits. Like Therion, who's a thief, so his dagger strikes can steal HP or SP from enemies. Or Primrose, another one of my favorites. She comes from a very dark place. In my opinion, she has the darkest story out of all of these characters. So of course, a couple of her abilities are dark attacks. She was also a dancer who had people People come from all over the land to see her so another one of her abilities is she can make any of the NPCs in the world follow her she can allure them into following her and then she can summon them in battles to fight for her or take damage for her but it goes without saying that having all these different and unique characters depending on which four you have in your party during battles makes for very different experiences you can really play to whatever style you feel most comfortable with. And diving into that combat system a little bit more, that battle point mechanic is such a cool system. Every turn you don't use a battle point, you store another one. And then at any time, you can use up to four battle points to power up your moves. If you use the battle points to power up your basic attack, you'll attack X amount of times depending on how many battle points you use. For example, if you use four battle points, you'll unleash a flurry of four attacks. But if Cyrus uses four battle points on a spell, that one spell will get powered up four times and become much stronger. That mechanic never got old and I absolutely love it. There's so much more I want to talk about in regards to everything I've already said, I want to dive deeper into all of it, but we just don't have the time. I need to talk about the way the game looks. The visuals in this game literally take my breath away. Like, I know that's such a lame thing to say, 
but I don't think a game has ever done it quite the way this game has. That mix of 2D and 3D sprites, and then some realistic backgrounds or water or snow thrown into the mix, with all kinds of crazy lighting over the top of it, every single area looks like a freaking painting, looks like a work of art. Every single screen, every time you move into a new area or a new location, each one of these places looks so incredible. God, I, I saw a comment online of someone saying they're waiting for a price drop to like $40 because they feel like 60s is a ripoff considering it's just a 2D game with sprites and that physically hurt me inside. How can you not adore it? You have those snowy areas with the glistening snow coming down in front of the camera or behind the set piece. You have the woods with the light shining in through the trees. It's like they invented a whole new visual style and perfected it at the same time. Something I touched on earlier but didn't really dive into too much is each one of these characters have different abilities based on their character, on their traits. For example, Therion, who again is a thief, can steal things from pretty much every single NPC. You can switch to Tressa, the merchant, you can go back to that person and you can offer to buy that thing instead. Earlier we talked about how Old Beric can challenge anyone to a duel, Primrose can convince anyone to follow her and fight for her, and so with each of these characters having their own different ways of interacting with the world, you might take that into consideration as well when you're forming your party. And then later on, I won't ruin it, but some other cool things start to happen with these traits, and you can do some other really cool things with them. That's all I'll say about that. All of it, in my opinion, was either done to perfection or near perfection. It all comes together in one very complete package to make a brilliant RPG. It might be my favorite turn-based RPG of all time. I'm gonna give it a few weeks, reflect on it, see if it's just because I'm playing it right now. Maybe I feel that way, but I really do feel like it's either gonna be my favorite or my second favorite turn-based RPG of all time. And as far as on the Switch goes, all right, yeah, Breath of the Wild might still be my favorite Switch game because it's Zelda and it's Nintendo. But as far as non-first-party Nintendo games, as far as another company coming along and making an exclusive game for the Switch, Square Enix has set the bar so high. I need more developers to come along and make games as quality as this game is for the Switch, exclusively for the Switch. I'm giving this game a 10 out of 10. I, I, there's no such thing as a perfect game. Every game, there's something that you can change. There's something you can make just a little bit better. And in Octopath, I don't know what that thing is. But I can't say it's a perfect game, just like I can't say any game is a perfect game. But some things need to get a 10 out of 10. It's just my opinion. And all these reviews will always be just my opinion. But my opinion is 10 out of 10. And if you have a Switch and you've ever loved an RPG, you need to play this game. I've been talking for an hour. It's coming up on an hour. I've said an hour's worth of stuff that I'm gonna have to cut down to 15 minutes. And believe me, I could have talked about more. I want to talk about more. If you enjoyed this video, click or tap this one right here because you might enjoy that one too. Subscribe because I'd really appreciate it. I'm always giving away games, so check that description down below for how to enter. Also, let me know if you feel I did this game any kind of justice. I, I really tried. I love the game, that's all I can say. <laughs>